Hello, and welcome to episode 425 of the official EstablishTheRun.com podcast. My name is Adam Levitan, as always, joined by Evan Silva. And today, we are here for a fan favorite, undoubtedly, one of the listeners' favorite shows of each year. Evan, how's it going? It's going well. This is the third week of preseason. I yes. mean, this is this is real. It's almost like a real game. It's not a real game, but it's almost like a real game. A lot of the teams will trot out starters this week that they wouldn't have normally played in the previous two preseason weeks. You know, we're going to get, I mean, we're, we're getting real, real close. On today's show, we are going to do a simple exercise. We will go round by round and reveal slash discuss our favorite player to draft in each round. Simple, easy, fun. Also, as you know, it is officially fantasy football draft season. I would say peak draft season is this weekend and next week. You're going to see a lot of people pushing their rankings. Everyone's got rankings. They're mostly pulling them out of their ass. No one takes them as seriously as us. We have this full-blown virgin team handpicked by Silva and I. We're following every little bit of news, updating target shares, carry projections, literally down to the decimal point. All of that flows through to our rankings and makes it so you can be sure when your draft comes, you have the most up-to-date info. Also, and, and and by the way, Dave Holmes' heater rages on. Uh, I don't know if if some people that listen to this are, are not big on Twitter. You got to go check out the video uh, that we just put out. We have a, another draft coming up. Thankfully, we're uh, putting the the dropping the mic and we're moving on to Drew Dinkmeyer to be our, our third wheel in this upcoming draft. I think everybody will get a kick out of this one. Drew Dinkmeyer, one of the smartest dudes I've ever met in my life, for sure. And, and speaking of of that, uh, mention this podcast is brought to you by Underdog. The twenty five hundred we're doing Monday. Monday night will be on underdog. It's a live stream, but we're just going to play the best plays. I mean, that's what it comes down to, Evan. We're not going to get all fancy. We're not right. going to get into the spreadsheets. We're just going to play the best plays because this is a small field, 72 person, $2,500 buy-in. And so you don't need to get into all kinds of crazy stuff with strategy. We're going to play the best plays. It should be a good draft. Check that out uh, Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube. All right, we're here with round one, Evan. And, you know, I, I'll say two things about round one. First of all, I want a top four pick. If I can't get a top four pick, I want a top six pick. Because honestly, I'm happy to start with any of Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson. And then I'm also okay starting with Jamar Chase or Austin Eckler. To me, that's like the clear top six. If I don't get in the top six, I'm disappointed. And there's two reasons why. I mean, I think those guys are in a tier of their own, especially the first four. And I don't see a big difference between the late round one guys and kind of the mid to late round two guys. So you kind of get the both best of both worlds with a top six pick. You get the ideal spot in round one and the ideal spot in round two. If I don't get one of those first six, my preferred target is Steph Diggs. I just think so ridiculously safe is Steph Diggs. We know Buffalo is going to be among the league leaders in both pass attempts and touchdowns scored. I mean, Steph didn't even have an explosive year last year. He ran bad on touchdowns. He ran bad on long, big plays. He still caught 103 passes for 1,225 yards no. and 10 touchdowns. I mean, just ridiculously safe is Steph Diggs. And so if I don't get one of those top six, I'm, st I'm focused on getting Steph Evan round one favorite pick. So I have to concede that one of my biases is that I play most of my action, especially in season long redraft on FFPC, where it's tight end premium scoring. And this year, and we've talked, I've talked ad nauseum about it, about uh, stacking Chiefs. And when you start off with Travis Kelsey as, let's say, the number six overall pick, and I, Jonathan Bales once did a, a report on Roto World for us that uh, outlined that uh, over the course of time in high stakes leagues, the 106 pick has been the most profitable over the course of time. And that's right in the wheelhouse for where you take Travis Kelsey in a tight end premium FFPC league. And he's been my most drafted first round player. I understand that there are concerns with him regarding his age. He didn't look aged at all when he was getting 100 yards every single game throughout the playoffs. He's now the clear number one. No, no Tyreek Hill in Kansas City for Patrick Mahomes, who you can get now at a two to three round discount. I mean, I just did a um, FFPC main event with Pat Thorman, Rich Rebar, Davis Maddock, and JJ Zacharyson together. We got Travis Kelsey as our 106, and we got Patrick Mahomes in the middle of the sixth round. Mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes is going very late this year. So that's my favorite stack for the big, large, large field uh, tournament uh, uh, drafts. And, and that's what I tend to do. And it sounds like even in non tight end premium, it sounds like you like Travis Kelsey as a preferred target in round one also. I do, but you're going to get him a lot later. Yep. I mean, you can you can get him at the one-two turn, whereas in tight end premium, you, you pretty much have to take him at, uh, in the middle of the first round. All right, let's go to round two. My favorite pick <laughs> in round two is Saquon Barkley. I mean, how can you finish mm -hmm. as the number one overall player in fantasy football? 
I, it's possible, I guess, if you don't have a pass down role, you know, Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry have proved that to some degree, but it's harder. I mean, the cleanest path, the cleanest path to being the best player in fantasy is to have a true three down plus goal line role in a good offense. Now, I do think the Giants are going to really lean on Saquon this year. Like he's going to play 80% or more of the snaps. He's so good as a receiver. He's the goal line back. The question, of course, is this Giants offense and Daniel Jones, you know, mm-hmm. if they suck. And by the way, the, the wide receiver core is a mess right now with Tony yeah. still banged up and Galladay playing so bad. Colin Johnson out, Wendale being undersized, obviously, you know, it, there's concerns there. And if the Giants suck, if they can't string together drives, if they can't get in the red zone, I mean, that's how it goes bad for Saquon Barkley at running back. Running back is always going to be riskier than wide receiver, especially in rounds three through six, but probably in round two as well. But I do think that Danny Dimes has looked good in the preseason. I have faith in Dable, and I think it's a bet worth making on Saquon in round two. So my favorite round two pick is Saquon Barkley when I can get him. Evan, who's your favorite round two pick? One of my favorite starts just straight up is Travis Kelsey in one and then C.D. Lamb in two. And so that's who I'm going to go with is my favorite second round target is C.D. Lamb. You've got to take him toward the top end of the second round generally. Um, But I mean, his target potential, his reception potential, I mean, I've got bets on him to lead the league in receptions. I mean, I think he can catch 120 balls this year. Like, I think that's in his range of potential outcomes. Amari Cooper is gone. Michael Gallup is not going to be ready probably until early October. Jalen Tolbert is an intriguing third round rookie, but also he's kind of cooled cooled off a little bit as training camp has progressed. James Washington is hurt. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, we kind of don't know where he is right now in terms of his effectiveness. Just the offense should flow through C.D. Lamb, uh, and I love to get him in round two. I want to say this about CeeDee Lamb. We gave him 23% target share in our model in the back end, and we still have CeeDee Lamb as a really strong pick in the early second round. But guys who get huge target shares like Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas in their head, they were on 30%. So if you give CeeDee Lamb 25, 26, 27%, which I think is possible, he still has some upside, I think, on that early second round draft tag. So I certainly like that one. We'll talk more about the Tyron Smith injury, which I think is one of the more impactful offensive line injuries. We'll talk more about that uh, in the news pod coming up on Tuesday. Round three. My favorite pick in round three is Kyle Pitts. It's, It's just so hard to make up ground at tight end. And in home leagues, which is what we're talking about here, I'm confident that I can beat up my opponents at wide receiver and running back through the middle rounds and later. I'm just, you know, we're grinding harder. We're being smarter, hopefully. We can get some insane values at running back and wide receiver. But if I wait a tight end, well, now I'm just hoping that Dallas Goddard can can get, you know, not get crushed so bad by Kelsey, Andrews, Pitts, Waller teams. You know, I'm hoping I can figure it out with Irv Smith and Pat Fryermuth. They're like praying Albert O can give me something. And so to me, in round three, Kyle Pitts is an opportunity to play a rising star at 21 years old, you know, went over a thousand yards as a 20 year old rookie moves like a wide receiver. I get to play him at tight end, you know, and it's tough because there's a lot of wide receivers. I do really like in round three, uh, T Higgins, AJ Brown, uh, Michael Pittman. But again, in home style leagues, I can, I can still show up with loaded wide receivers, even if I attack the position a bit later, I think. And so for me, favorite round three pick is Kyle Pitts. Evan, go ahead on your favorite round three pick. Love it. For me, it's Mike Evans. And I don't, but that's largely because I don't believe that he should be a third round pick. You know, at one point I had him as the number seven overall player. We backed off that a little bit, but I still have him as a mid second rounder. Yet he is going at an FFPC main event ADP number 29 overall. Yep. Um, so you can absolutely get him almost every time around the 2-3 turn, and he's an amazing 2-3 turn pick. Chris Godwin did avoid uh, PUP to open the season. He's not going to open the season on reserve PUP, but I don't think he's going to be ready for the first couple weeks, and I don't think he's going to be effective until October based on everything that I've read. No Rob Gronkowski is huge for Mike Evans because Mike Evans, classic player that was put on this earth to score touchdowns, and now we're removing red zone efficiency and red zone targets from the equation and i think that uh mike evans get gets a, a bump because of that now mike evans has been hurt uh for a decent amount in training camp and tom brady wasn't there for like mm-hmm. 11 days so there's been like no buzz generated on him and i think that that might be some of the reason why mike mike evans is going at number 29 overall I, but i think it's ridiculous well, i think it's a hall of fame player and he's gonna have a hall of fame season i, I think the reason that the adp started to tank was partly the Godwin thing, but then the Julio thing. I mean, people think that Julio's going to have a really big role and take away from Mike Evans, and that tanked his ADP a little bit, but I agree with Evan. When it gets to me at the 2-3 turn, I'm taking Mike Evans a lot, particularly in leagues that are full PPR, that favor wide receiver, and and in, in leagues where I can start 3-4 wide receivers. I think that makes sense a lot. All right, round four. 
I'm going to go with DJ Moore. I, I know DJ Moore goes in round three in some tougher leagues. His composite ADP on ESPN, Yahoo, other casual sites is around 41st overall. DJ Moore, three straight years of 1,150 receiving yards or more, despite quarterbacks of Sam Darnold, Corpse of Cam Newton, Teddy Bridgewater, Kyle Allen. Now he gets Baker Mayfield, which I think is an upgrade. And DJ Moore is still just 25 years old. And the touchdowns, man. I mean, to catch 301 passes in your career and only have 14 touchdowns, like, okay, maybe he'll never profile as a dominant touchdown score. But this touchdown rate of 4.6% is just unsustainable in, in a good way. Like DJ Moore is going to score more touchdowns. And so my favorite round four pick that I smash every time is indeed DJ Moore. Evan? Am I allowed to pick um, for my fourth round pick a guy who always goes in round three? Who's that? I'll tell you if you can even have a chance was, to get him in round I was four. giving you shit. Oh, but... you think it's DJ Moore always goes in round three? Yeah, Maybe you're yeah. right. It's Maybe okay. Right. It's okay. It's okay. Um, well, because I'm going to take a gross guy here. <laughs> People are going to say mad. Zeke, right? Yes. God, oh, God. I know. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Especially after the, the Cowboys team preview. I did the Cowboys team preview. And- it was the first team preview that I did, and I was like, DND. Like, do what? not draft this guy. Wait, make, make yeah. sure you, you give – if you're going to go Zeke here, make sure you give your Tyron Smith and how much it affects the oh, Cowboys Oh, yeah. Take. Well, um, they do have some depth in that they use their first-round pick on a dude who can play left tackle, and they have Connor McGovern, who they can use at left guard, because the, the dude that they drafted – um, he's going to kick out the left tackle and then McGovern is going to come back, come in and, and play left guard. They have a little bit of depth, but now, I mean, now they're living on the margins. Yeah. You know, they're real thin in terms of offensive line. It's just, you know, and, and it was Pat Thorman had a great tweet today about, you know, why have the Cowboys only won one playoff game in the last, you know, whatever, whatever couple decades. And he, he was quote tweeting Jerry Jones saying our, our, our team runs through Zeke, you know, but I mean, that's what the, that's what the team believes. And, you know, it's um, it's one of the, the situations where we have to remove our idea of uh, assumption of rational decision making when it comes to a particular NFL team, because we just kind of we know what they want to do. And, and I think he's Ezekiel Elliott is certainly going to get all of September to show that he's back from the PCL injury last year. He's going to get a ton of work and they're going to throw. I mean, the, you know, they're they're thin uh, uh, in terms of their pass catchers, what's left. And they think that Tony Pollard is a situational player. Now, I do think that that pendulum could shift toward Tony Pollard, especially if Ezekiel Elliott is not effective in September, but he's going to get every opportunity to show that he can be effective. And we know that opportunity is the crux of what moves the truly moves the pendulum uh, in terms of running back scoring in fantasy football. So yeah. look, he and, and he falls in the fourth round every time. Yeah. And, and you can sometimes even get him in the fifth. So I'm going to take my chances with the guy with, with a large, I mean, on a spreadsheet, actually, Leone should be loving this guy <laughs> because on the spreadsheet, he projects for a ton of touches, a ton, you know, a ton of touchdown upside. Um, and the offense is going to run through him at least through September. And if he's effective, it's going to continue to run through him. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can't bring myself to be on this with Evan. I, I totally get it. <laughs> I, I just, I, I can't face having Zeke on my team in November and December because I think it could be real bad by then for the Cowboys, especially with yeah. no Tyron Smith. And I, I just think it could be real bad yeah. for Zeke. So, you know, you know. we screwed up, Adam, uh, on the Sigmund Bloom show. We, t- we should have talked more about the Ezekiel Elliott situation. Yeah. 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 It's just, I, I get it. I, I just, I cannot be on, on board. And there's so many wide receivers I want in this range where I end up like never taking running back there in round four anyways. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not for me, but I, I totally get it. Let's go to round five. Amon Ra St. Brown is my favorite round five pick. Sometimes you can get him in round six, but I kind of cheated on the DJ Moore down way. I'll cheat a little bit up in Amon Ra St. Brown round five. Just a ridiculous end to his rookie year. Eight plus catches in six straight games. Now I get that in those games, Hawkinson and, and DeAndre Swift were banged up. They didn't have DJ Chark. They didn't have Jameson Williams. But still, it's very clear to me that the sun god is Jared Goff's go-to guy. It just fits with his game so perfectly, those quick hitting over the middle shorter balls. And I do think the Lions will be much improved this year, at least on offense, like legit good on offense and still likely very bad on defense. So you know what that means, man, like shootouts. And so the Lions could be in some crazy games. And I do think Amon Ra will lead them in targets by a significant margin. My favorite pick in round five, I've just been taking him every time in round five and six is, is Amon Ra. 
St. Brown. I dig it. Uh, I'm going with Brandon Cooks. And this is a guy that we got very much right last year. We got a lot wrong, okay? But we got a lot right, too. And Brandon Cooks was high amongst his. I also like this because Leone is low on Brandon Cooks. And I love to fade Leone. I mean, but <laughs> Brandon Cooks is like a really good player. I mean, he's got, I think, sixth, a thousand yard seasons under his belt in the NFL. He is the clear number one. And look, I, I like to talk of Nico Collins, too. But Brandon Cooks is the clear number one for the Texans. And I think that Davis Mills is probably going to be better in his second year mm -hmm. than he was in his first year. And his first year wasn't all that bad. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon Cooks has big, big playability. Uh, he plays, you know, indoors on a fast track. And um, I, he's going to get a ton of targets this year. So I, I think he's an easy pick in the fifth round. Yeah, Brandon. And, you know, David, I've said it a million times. Davis Mills and Pep Hamilton, the most underrated quarterback OC duo, I think, in the whole league, certainly like Brandon Cooks. I wish it was a little bit cheaper, but I think it's totally fine there in round five. Round six, Juju Smith-Schuster for me in round six. I, I get that he's been hurt, that he's had bad numbers lately. But man, that version of Ben Roethlisberger was around league worst quarterback play. Now Juju goes to Kansas City, where we know they'll be among the league leaders in mm -hmm. pass rate over expectation. Andy Reid always is. Patrick Mahomes is one of the highest, has one of the highest slot target rates in the entire NFL. I have my doubts on MVS. I think we know what McCole Hardman is. Sky Moore is a rookie. It just lines up. Uh, Travis Kelsey is going to be 33 years old. It just lines up for Juju to get a ton of of, of targets to the best quarterback in the NFL, Patrick Mahomes. Like, I don't think 140 targets is ridiculous to think That's for not. Juju Smith-Schuster this year. And it's just so late in round six to get someone who can see 140 targets for Patrick Mahomes and is 25 years old. So Juju Smith-Schuster in round six for me. Evan, who's your favorite round six pick? Um, I like this round a lot because I always feel like there's a faller who makes it to me and I, I, I wind up just liking him. Um, and, and, you know, like I mentioned before, like Patrick Mahomes sometimes will fall to the sixth round. Mm -hmm. And if you have a chief in the early rounds, could be Juju in the fifth, could be Travis Kelsey in the you know late first. It could be, you know, wh whomever. Um, I like to pair him with Patrick Mahomes, especially if he falls this late. But I'm not going to go with Patrick Mahomes here. I'm going to go with A.J. Dillon. Mm -hmm. And... I love Aaron Jones. Okay. Um, I, I think that he's one of the, I considered him to be maybe my favorite second round fantasy pick. CeeDee Lamb was a little bit easier, uh, but Aaron Jones, to me, it, it was right there. You know, he was, he was going to be my next guy on my list. And I think he's going to have an awesome year. I also think that AJ Dillon is going to have an awesome year. I actually think that both of this, both of those guys, albeit in the same offense, could end up beating their ADPs because this team is going to funnel through its best players. And Aaron Rodgers has already talked about this. The best players on the team are Aaron Rodgers, A.J. Dillon, and Aaron Jones, or the best players on the offense. And, you know, I mean, they have problems at receiver, a lot of question marks at tight end. They're going to run this offense through those two dudes. And so I want to get I want to get at least one of them on my team. I also think that they could be dominant in terms of like time of possession. I love what they put together defensively. Mm -hmm. They play in a weak ass division. The Bears are going to be so bad, gloriously bad. <laughs> Um, the Lions, you know, we we like the Lions, but our Lions, our our Lions, we like them to beat their win total, but we don't really think that they're going to be good, do we? Yes, we do. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> uh, the Vikings, the Vikings are are interesting, but I think they have a lot of problems, especially defensively. Uh, and so, and I, the Packers are just, they're, they're so much better than every team in their division. They're going to be able to control games, milk clock, put the ball in A.J. Dillon's belly. He's going to score a lot of touchdowns. He's going to get a lot, a lot of carries. And he showed last year that he catch the ball. He didn't catch the ball at Boston College. He had 34 receptions last year. Aaron Rodgers already like, let's get him 50 this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love A.J. Dillon for sure. A lot of these builds where I only start with one running back, I end up with A.J. Dillon a lot. Uh, for my round seven, I'm going to give two running backs. I, because I'm afraid that the hype on maybe Chase Evans getting a little bit hot. But if you can get Chase Evans in round seven, I do like taking Chase Edmonds in round seven. There's a real good chance that this offense is actually good, the Dolphins offense. And Chase Edmonds is the kind of back that I want in good offenses. Get some of the base work and all the pass work will Chase Edmonds. If Chase Edmonds isn't there in round seven, Tony Pollard is on my list for round yep. seven. It's kind of the inverse of Evan. I think by November and December, Tony Pollard will be more and more a part of this team. But man, he's such a good pass catcher anyways on a team that doesn't have Amari Cooper, 
Michael Gallup, James Washington. We know Pollard's going to get some base work as well, especially if Zeke struggles. Like I think he might, especially without yeah. Tyron Smith. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, if Zeke gets hurt or benched at any point, I mean, Pollard is like a legit top five overall option. So yeah. they're, they're going to uh, need his playmaking ability, period. Yeah. I mean, period. period. So Chase yeah. Edmonds, I prefer over Tony Pollard, but yeah. uh, Chase Edmonds or Tony Pollard in round seven yeah. are my two favorite picks. I, I think we should all agree that what we've seen in terms of the usage – uh, from Chase Edmonds so far in the preseason has been extremely pro- I I think that Miles Gaston is going to get cut. Yep. Um, Raheem Moser is a you know about as fragile as you can find in an NFL player. Uh, and Chase Edmonds, I, he seems like he's locked a, a, atop the depth chart right now. Yep. Totally agree. Um, I'm going to go with here Damian Pierce. Mm-hmm. And I, this is another Fade Leone pick. I mean, he gets so mad. You know, every time I move Damian Pierce up, up, up further ahead of J.K. Dobbins, his injured boy who isn't going to catch passes, Damian Pierce is a baller, uh, period. Uh, Josh Norris was talking him up before the draft. He winds up going to like the perfect, the quintessential situation where all he has to compete with is Rex Burkett. And look, we like Rex Burkett. He won you a lot of money last year, Adam. Yes, I love him. Um, and, and, you know, Marlon Mack, who's he's an Achilles victim. And we like to bet against those guys, unfortunately. Damian Pierce can play in the passing game. He's built. He has a workhorse build. Uh, His cutting ability and his vision and the fact that the Texans held him out as a fourth round rookie at the second preseason game, which is a a, a game where usually a guy like him would get like 11 carries. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just so telling uh, to me the, to where they stand on Damian Pierce. I believe in him as a talent. I believe in the situation. I believe in the offensive line having more potential uh, than it has in past years. Brandon Thorne has talked about that a little bit. So I, I, I want to get Damian Pierce on my teams. Yeah, and you really have to know your opponents to know where Damian Pierce is going to go. I was working on the uh, exploiting the default rankings. By the way, those are up for ESPN, Yahoo, and Sleeper now. And Damian Pierce is ranked all over the place, obviously, based yeah. on how much the, these sites are adjusting for price. But yeah, you just got to know your opponents because I think you might be able to get them later than round seven, but against some people, you might not. You know, so Absolutely. you really got to know. Yeah. Last night, I was in a 14 team where I took them in the fifth round. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Got to got to know the room. Yeah. All right. Let's go to round eight. If you listen to the quarterback strategy podcast, episode 419, hopefully you understand what's going on at the quarterback position because it's definitely changing. And, and so I'm not going to get all into it here. But my point is that if Kyler Murray or Jalen Hurts are still there in round seven, I'm taking them. OK, if they're not. I'll tell you to take them in round eight. But if they're both gone by the time it gets to me in round eight, I like taking Trey Lance here in round eight. Now, there's certainly a lot of leagues where Trey Lance may last longer round nine or even round 10. But I want to be sure that I get one of these dual threat quarterbacks. And I want access to a dude like Trey Lance, who has this rocket arm. You know, he can run the ball 16 times in a game, as we saw last year. He has some of the best yards after catch guys in the entire league in Debo, uh, and Ayuk, and uh, Kittle. And he also has this major talent maximizing coach in Kyle Shanahan. And so... You know, I prefer Kyler Murray. I prefer Jalen Hurts, but I don't want it to get past Trey Lance for me. And so I'll go ahead and stop the quarterback slide for me here in round eight with Trey Lance. Evan, who do you have for your favorite round eight pick? So the more that I have thought about Kareem Hunt, the more I want to get him on my teams. Mm. Um, I think he's a super sharp pick. I think that he has this level of like a floor where he's going to be a usable flex, even if he just stays in the same situation. You know, it's it's a little bit convoluted with Ernest Johnson there. And then, you know, they drafted a guy and obviously Nick Chubb is the number one, but I think he's going to have a role period if he stays in Cleveland. But if he gets traded to Philadelphia, which has been somewhat heavily rumored, like all of a sudden he's, uh, I mean, he works. I mean, what's gonna, what, what would he be if he, get, if he got traded to Philadelphia, a third round pick? I mean, it depends how much you think Miles Sanders still plays, but yeah. It does. Um, but I think that he, uh, that uh, Kareem Hunt's ADP would skyrocket. Definitely, certainly. In that scenario, it's just how high would it get? Like, like let's say third, fourth round turn. And right now, you can every time, almost every time, get him in the eighth round. Yeah. So, you know, that's the kind of situation that I like to invest in where you have a high floor and a high ceiling. We really want all our fantasy picks to be like that. Yep. All right. Round nine. Uh, This is one that Evan was on early, and I didn't really get on board uh, enough until lately, but I'm taking him a ton lately. And my round nine guy is Christian Kirk. I get that Christian Kirk was overpaid by the Jaguars, you know, four years, 72 million. 
and maybe he doesn't profile as like a true alpha. But if you think that Trevor Lawrence is going to take a year two leap, and I do think he will take a year two leap, then a lot of it has to go through Christian Kirk. I mean, he can really win out of the slot. He's always capable of playing outside. Saw it in the first preseason game. I mean, he was clicking with Trevor Lawrence immediately, 38% target share for Christian Kirk. And so this late round nine to get a number one wide out with a good quarterback who's talented, I mean, I think it's really late. And so uh, round eight, round nine, in that range, I'm taking Christian Kirk. Evan, who is your round nine pick? I mean, you just stole my guy. Yeah, but, that's okay. Um, we can have the same guy. Yeah, I mean, uh, all right, fine. We can have the same guy. Okay. Christian Kirk locked in as the Jaguars number one, I think. I mean, again, we're talking about Zay Jones here. I mean, he's yeah. been in the league for five years. You don't think we know who he is? Yeah. He's had like four good games in, in his life. Um, Marvin Jones and his underlying metrics, go read the Jaguars team preview. His underlying metrics are suggest that he's falling off the cliff. Um, Evan Ingram, you know, is kind of interesting, but, you know, he's Evan Ingram. Uh, and I think that Trevor Lawrence can absolutely make a massive year one to year two leap, especially especially getting away from Urban Meyer and going to Doug Peterson. Mm -hmm. So Christian Kirk, I mean, and, and I, I'm willing to take him before the eight, before the ninth round. Um, I would even be willing to take him just if all my, if, if, you know, my, my targets are gone in the, in the, like the late seventh round, I'd take him in the late seven. He's a guy that I want to get on my teams. And if he's there in the ninth, I think he's an auto draft. Yep, yeah, for sure. Let's go to round 10. I actually have two running backs here in round 10. I'm not sure which one will be available. It depends uh, on the league. Round 10, I have Ramondre Stevenson. And I think one thing to note from the last preseason game is they went series by series rather than specific roles. And there's been a lot of talk out of New England that they're going to ditch that James White role and just give guys full series to themselves at a time. I think that's interesting like for Ramondre. It. And then I also have Michael Carter. So I think Michael Carter is going to start week one. He can catch the football. I do think Brees Hall will come on and kind of force this into a 50-50 or 40-60 type committee before too long. But I think still in round 10 to get a player of Michael Carter's ability and have a starting role at least to start the season, I think is interesting. So Ramondre and Michael Carter were my two that I had for round 10. Evan, who do you have for round 10? I like Daryl Henderson and Naheem Hines. Mm, if we're okay. going to go, we're going to be able to make two picks here. Yep. Um, Naheem Hines, I, I some people can't get themselves to get excited about Naheem Hines. But number one, he's a spiked week player. Number two, the Colts receiving core behind Michael, Pitt, uh, Michael Pittman is just, you know, we're talking up guys that don't deserve to be talked up. Paris Campbell has never been able to stay healthy. Alec Pierce is an intriguing young player, but also a guy who's never, you know, I mean, he's never played in the NFL. He played at Cincinnati. And it's like, you know, he, he could be a total dud. Um, and Naheem Hines is an excellent receiver. And yo, if Jonathan Taylor goes down, look TF out because Naheem Hines is going to go the fuck off. Yeah. Um, and Naheem Hines is, I mean, he's also a guy who can, even in games where, you know, they're trailing because they're not going to lead like they did last year. They, they led so much last year. They're going to play from behind more this year. And he plays when they play from behind. Yep. Um, and then Daryl Henderson, I, I believe the smoke that he's going to uh, open the season and even timeshare with Cam, Ak Cam Akers. Me too. And, and over the course of time, betting against players coming back from Achilles, running backs coming back from Achilles has been extremely profitable. Yeah. So Daryl Henderson is a guy who you kind of know that he's going to have an early season role. And he's also like a, a bet against a running back coming off a torn Achilles. Like this is... You know, it's a lot of common sense here with Daryl Henderson. Uh, by the way, Evan, I don't know if you want to hear this, but on the team we drafted with Leone, our starting running backs Ooh. in week one are going to be... I've been trying two, to forget that team. Your, your two guys, Daryl Henderson and Naheem Hines. I mean, I, I actually think that it's going to be fine. Um, It'll be fine. I know. It's, it, it was a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> round 11. My favorite pick in round 11 is the dude who went 16th overall in the draft, but nobody wants to take, Jahan Dotson. Jahan Dotson goes 16th overall in the NFL draft. The commanders tell us what they think about him. They give yeah. him every single snap in the preseason. Every snap with Wentz in the preseason. Dude caught 91 balls in 12 games for Penn State. Shout out Penn State Come on. Yeah. last year. I mean, it's just a no-brainer for me. I'm when with it gets you me. on this. And, and you know you know who the, the people who are anti-Jahan Dotson are, right? They're the spreadsheet socialists. <laughs> they actually, they, they, they pretend like they're not talent evaluators, but they actually pretend to be talent evaluators, and they just think that Jahan Dotson stinks. Yeah. Yeah. And they, yeah. Well, yeah. Anyways, yeah. I don't want to so, get into that. Not, not today. Okay. Not today. But Jahan Dotson is round 11, and you might be able to get him later. Excellent I've seen him go completely undrafted in some leagues. Um, yeah. But for round 11, I had Jahan Dotson. Evan, who'd you have for round 11? Like We're it. only going to go through uh, 12 rounds here today. Bye, yeah. guys. Um, all right. So I'm just going to force some guys in here. Because uh, we're only going two more rounds. I'm going to go with Tyrion Davis-Price. 
Oh boy. And one thing that we've been, I mean, we've been, we were kind of early on this, that Trey Sermon could get cut. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trey Sermon stinks. Let's, let's be real. Anybody who watched him play last year, Kyle Shanahan, first and foremost, knows that the guy stinks. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he wound up being inactive on game days. You know, there is, he's a disaster. He he can't play. Um, And that's why they drafted Tyrion Davis Price in the third round. Tyrion Davis Price has had a good camp. He's had a somewhat underwhelming preseason, but the beat writers say he's looked a lot better on the practice field than he has so far in preseason. And we know that preseason, extremely small sample size. Elijah Mitchell was already injured and he was injured a ton last year. I mean, the, just I, I think the Cs are parting for Tyrion Davis Price. Um, this actually might be a little early for him. Yeah. You could usually get him a, a round later, or but I, I want to jam him in here because I want to get him on my teams. Yeah. It's interesting. He has been going way, way, way later because I think people have taken the Trey Sermon news that, hey, Trey Sermon might actually make the team, right? And like people, some people have read the news that way and that's kind of tanked TDP's ADP. My take is that Sermon is like on the stone cold bubble right now, like actually like 50-50 oh, yeah. to make the team. So I actually, I actually don't really have a take there and that's causing me to avoid TDP a little bit. But I hear you, if, if Sermon ends up getting cut, Eli Mitchell gets hurt, you could be dealing with gold there. Eli Mitchell is already hurt. Yeah. yeah. Last one I have in round 12 here is Isaiah McKenzie. Z. Uh, Kobe Z missed two games last year. In one of them, Isaiah McKenzie caught 11 balls for 125 yards and a touchdown. In the other game that Colby Beasley missed, McKenzie six for 65 and two touchdowns. It's just such a valuable role that Isaiah McKenzie has. And I think that he's outplayed Jamison Crowder strongly enough to go into the season as a starting slot receiver. Now, I think Crowder will rotate in on both the outside and the inside at times, but this team throws so much. I still think he can get some value out of Isaiah McKenzie. So he was my round 12 guy. I also had Naheem Hines on my list for kind of the 11, 12 okay. bridge there if you can get him but Evan already said him so yeah. Hines in round 12 for me Evan who do you have last guy we're going to say today I'm going to kind of jam another guy in here and he's really a 14th or 15th rounder but he's another guy I like just to be you know aggressively draft especially in the late rounds that's Jarek McKinnon mm-hmm. who last year played in three playoff games for the Chiefs had over 300 yards from scrimmage he's I mean he knows the offense I think he's going to make the team um, he, he has a contract that's very cuttable but I think he's going to make the team because he it's, knows all he, he knows the system and he fits so well in the Andy Reid system. Um, and he's already like, I mean, if you look at the preseason reps, he's like the third down back, right? Correct. He's the passing game back. And look, there's a lot of hype on Isaiah Pacheco. I did a live draft with Jack Hahn <laughs> last night. This guy takes Pacheco in the seventh round. Oh, you know? no. So I, I I come by, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking. Who took Pacheco in the seventh <laughs> round? I already knew that Jack Hahn took him. And he's like, I did. I did, you know. Um, yeah, I don't Jack, like that. Jack Hahn's a riot. But yeah, um, but yeah I, Jarek McKinnon, you know, a trusted veteran. I don't think he's going to play 17 games. I'd be happy if, if he played 11 games. Uh, but he's in a great offense where he's a perfect system fit. And, uh, you know, again, uh, one of my favorite late round running back targets. Yeah, but I, I take Jarek McKinnon. You can get him even late on like underdog spots. I, I take him in like round 16, 17 and stuff like that and just get some usable weeks from a pass catching role with Patrick Mahomes. So yeah, certainly like that. All right. Appreciate everyone being here. Remember our draft kit. If you want more guys that I like beyond this range, I have my favorite flyers article up. Evan's article on who not to draft called shy away 30 is up. And then I also have an article on perfect draft that I'm kind of updating here, a similar concept to this. So be sure you have the draft kit if you don't yet. Also the exploiting the default rankings, I think is so, so, so important if you're doing drafts in the applets, i.e. ESPN, Yahoo, or Sleeper. Be sure you check that out on the site as well. All right, we'll be back on Sunday with a debate. Silva versus Sigmund Bloom debating some players. That will be out Sunday night. Stay tuned for that. For Evan, for producer Luke, I'm Adam. Good luck, everybody.